Do we know anything about San Francisco? Well, suddenly people like Vincent, Devin, Joseph, Hanyu, they think we do. But think about this, all you local San Francisco artists. Why the hell would you invite an outsider to tell you about life in San Francisco? <laughs> and would you, would, you have a, would you have a dermatologist operate on your cancer? <laughs> I mean, the point is this, is if I only bring this up because Hanru happens to be doing, he's the director of the Auckland Triennale. And all I can think is, what does he know about New Zealand? What does he know about New Zealand? <laughs> what does anyone know about New Zealand? <laughs> That's the art world we live in today. We are the new, I don't know if Henry's ever thought about this, I'd love to hear him now comment on this. We are the new adventurers. We are the people who in very desperate times are meant to present alternative visions of life, and I mean more than just culture, alternative visions of life for the simple reason that the smart guys, the politicians, everybody that went to Harvard are unable to accomplish. So they come to people on the furthest side of the world to come bail them out, offering possibly new ideas that will save their lives. Isn't that, isn't that strange? I mean, it used to be these French missionaries would spend weeks or months overland and overseas going to China to, to civilize the Chinese barbarians. <laughs> and then they would end up falling in love with Chinese culture, spending years there, and, and becoming specialists on Chinese culture. We're doing the same thing, only we do it in between seven to 10 days. <laughs> And it's heartwarming for us to see that our take on San Francisco would attract so much interest from people who know a thousand times more about San Francisco than we do. So can you tell us a bit about how you enter into the San Francisco context through the three words you are showing? It seems that you start with like the, the um, fear of going through the border control, right? Yeah, yeah. Some of you might be able to tell that I'm American. Well, she's a foreigner. Okay, so we're going through Detroit, the International Airport of Detroit, just recently. And we're flying in from Tokyo. And um, Young He goes through in five minutes, all right? It takes me like an hour and a half to get through. They take me into this little room, okay? I'm born outside of Detroit, okay? They take me in this room. And the first thing they say to me, these customs and, and border uh, immigration officer says, where were you born? And they're holding my passport. <laughs> this is one of these moments where my mother told me, taught me to say the right thing, but I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> they say, I was born in Ann Arbor, Michigan. He says, okay, and, uh, you know, and what are you doing here? I'm thinking, uh, well, you know, Ann Arbor's like 30 miles away. <laughs> I'm going to visit my family, you know? Actually, I wasn't, but that was a mistake. <laughs> See, I wasn't going to visit my family. My parents didn't know either. But the point is this, is that we're living in that world today. In this piece, why am I afraid of the USA? I mean, a foreigner gets through into the US. Why? Oh, Korea, we love Koreans. They spend a lot of money in America. And a guy like me, in the end, Hanru, you might think about this. They have no obligation to explain to you why they held you in a back room for an hour and a half. They won't tell you, because that would be revealing a state secret, possibly. You know, how they work things, profiling, stuff like that. They never do that. I never got stopped in China. It's kind of like they hardly, they hardly even look at you. You know, it's, 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 it's incredibly strange. The other day, in the, in the New York Times, some senator asks the attorney general, can you uh, shoot a rocket from a drone? Does the United States have the legal right to shoot a rocket from a drone at an American on American soil? All I can think is, we say it in peace. We say, do you even need to ask that question? The fact that you can ask it means it's actually possible, not just technologically, but legally. But in the end, we'll think about it a lot, we'll write a white paper on it, then, no, you probably can't do that. But that's scary, because there's some guys who probably said at the table, you can do that, let's do it. So, China's not like that, South Korea's not like that. Why is America the greatest country in the world like that? So that's that piece. And the piece on China. 
Hunter's going to love this. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me about communism. <laughs> the title of the second piece is, um, I tried to talk to the Chinese about communism, but no one wanted to talk to me. <laughs> so that's the piece on China. And this is the piece on Japan. And somebody asked us, why don't you do like Korea or Australia? Well, we've been doing Korea. Yeah, we've been, we're tired of Korea. <laughs> <laughs> and Japan's a fascinating country. And actually, this is the piece, um, well, again, that's Young He's idea, you know? I have a lot of secret things. And yeah, on. yeah, about um, Japanese women. How they have this secret life that they live in Japan and, and that they're able to visit America for one week, pretend that they're moving to America for the rest of their lives, and within one week they're able to live a full life in America before they go back to Japan and it makes life in Japan easier to bear given the social strictures that prevent them from being as free as they would like to be. So we thought that, you know, just from an artistic standpoint, we would take these three ideas that just kind of pop up. I mean, probably a lot of you are artists and these ideas just pop up. And we thought that we would weave them into a kind of texture that would speak to the San Francisco community because, as you all know, you're part of the Pacific Rim. Well, talking about Pacific Rim, and you, it seems that you, you choose not to use the word rim, but replace that word limb. Yeah, isn't that funny? <laughs> <laughs> but I thought, and I had to explain to you, hey, because limb is a very kind of literary word, that I would we would use that word because it <clears throat> evokes Pacific Rim, it evokes, it means this kind of depiction in precise terms of something, that's what lim means, it's from the French word uh, lumière, and um, that uh, it was kind of a play on words on Pacific Rim, and this funny joke uh, among Asians that sometimes they confuse the R with the L. So we did that. And how, how did you end up using the same font all the time? Yeah, that's a literary thing, Hannah. I don't know. <laughs> Um, you guys have four hands. You yeah. can use four different yeah, hands, right? <laughs> we um, have you ever read uh, to the last page of a book, a hardcover book? It's, it'll say like set in Baskerville, you know, set in Bodono. Yeah. We like the idea. Sometimes we've done it on a few of our pieces. Mm -hmm. We like the idea at the end of the piece of saying set in Monaco. People will think maybe we live in Monaco. <laughs> <laughs> 